You can, yeah, ask me any question. Okay, so I researched China's one child policy mainly because I am a product of the policy. When I was 15 months old, I was adopted from China. I was born in Guangzhou, which is in the Guangdong province. It's very, very southern China. And I was adopted with a bunch of other girls who were adopted by American families. And I wanted to learn more about China's one child policy solely because I wanted to learn more about my cultural roots and the real reason why China implemented this policy. And as I began to research, I realized that I was one of the luckier ones. And because so many women either chose to have abortions, either they had their child and then they killed it afterwards, or they were sent to orphanages. And these orphanages were terrible. They had terrible conditions, the children um, were not properly cared for. And they were eventually named the Dying Rooms from the 1995 documentary. And because of this documentary, China had to change its policies of the orphanage system. And so in 1980, China de decided to implement this policy in which it restricted families to only have one child. And although the parents could only have one child, there were 22 exceptions to this, such as people who were Tibetan, they could have more than one child, or people who had a child with a mental or a physical disability could also. Um, even though families had to only have one child, they still had other children, but in secrecy. And this eventually led to the underground society of Chinese people, and that left a lot of people in the medium because they could not apply for housing, could not get an education, and they were just simply left over. And another cause, or not cause, effect of the one-child policy was the enormous ratio of males to females. And in fact, there were, in 2016, there were 33.59 million more males than females. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, and because of this huge ratio, it could be argued that women's role in society had improved because then they could be more pickier with their partners or they could go into the workforce and not really have to stay at home and take care of the children. But in fact, that has changed. Um, now women are suppressed with more standards and are forced to marry at a much younger age. Um, and so because of all these problems, China decided to end this policy in 2013. And even though um, families could have more than one child, they, um, yes, they could have more than one child, families are still deciding to only have one child. It's purely economics for them. They want to invest in their child's future uh, as much as they can by either having, providing uh, extracurriculars or having extra tutors. And it's not only economics, but it's also practical because they want to focus more on one child and it would be very hard to balance both their work, their family too. And so it, in, in actuality, it didn't only affect the children, but it actually affected the the families and the families' parents and everyone in the whole entire world. And so this policy will go down in China's history, and time will only tell if it created the change that China wanted. Thank you.